Hi everyone! This video will show you how to do audience research for your media company using the Simply Analytics database available through SFU Library. There are two kinds of information that are useful when researching your potential audience. Their demographics, things like age, gender, income, level of education, basically the numbers, and their psychographics, including how they think and what they like. Simply Analytics is one of our best sources for Canadian demographic and psychographic information. It contains several data sets that we can display in maps or tables, including data on consumer spending and data from the Canadian Census. However, today we will focus on using PRISM data, also called market segments, which is produced by Enveronics Analytics. They use their own proprietary system of classifying groups of people into unique lifestyle segments with names like Latte Life, all terrain families, and mid-city mellow, based on their demographics, marketplace preferences, and psychographics. As you're starting to frame up the focus of your media company, you will likely already have a general idea of your ideal audience, things like their age range, their favorite activities, and so on. One advantage of Simply Analytics is that we can begin with their descriptions of lifestyle segments to see which ones might be a good match for our intended audience, then we can use the tools within Simply Analytics to find out more. All of these descriptions are found within our 2020 PRISM Marketers Handbook, which can be found within Simply Analytics under the Support and Data Documentation menus. We will look at how to navigate there later in the video. For now, we will just take a look at the handbook itself. The handbook is organized into a few main sections. First, we have all of the individual market segments listed in numerical order. This is followed by some broader groupings that will combine multiple segments together into social or life stage groups. In most cases, we will focus on one or more of the individual segments. The handbook is quite lengthy, but that's good news because it means that there is a lot of detailed info available about the market segments. As an example, let's say that our magazine media enterprise is focused on unique outdoor experiences and photography. Our ideal audience is younger singles and couples who enjoy spending their weekends with friends exploring hidden gems around Vancouver, such as natural hot springs, and who are keen to share pictures of their adventures on social media. This group is active, enjoying hiking and kayaking, but also prefers a degree of comfort and has the disposable income to afford island glamping getaways and quality outdoor gear. Browsing through the handbook, one possible segment that jumps out is Eat, Play, Love. It's important to think carefully about what characteristics might indicate a good match. The profiles are short and won't include all details of interest. For instance, there are no specific mentions of glamping or natural hot springs adventures, but we can see that this group of young singles leads an active lifestyle, including biking, walking, and adventure sports. They also travel widely, pursue experience-intensive lifestyles, have lots of disposable income, and are big users of Instagram, among other social media platforms. That all sounds promising. There's lots of great info here on who they are, how they think, where they live, and how they live. This can help us to more effectively market our publication to this group. Similarly, info on their attitudes and lifestyle can be useful in thinking about the types of advertisers we might be able to attract if advertising is part of our business model. We also get important insight into the leisure activities and media preferences of Eat, Play, Love, traditional media, but also mobile usage, internet and social media activity. This could all be useful when considering our strategy for reaching our audience over multiple channels. Further down in the handbook, there are data tables that provide more demographic data on the segment. Other segments could be good candidates for our magazine media concept too, but for now let's head over to Simply Analytics to find out more about Eat, Play, Love. We can link to the Simply Analytics uh, database from this Pub 375 guide. We may need to enter our computing ID and password to log in from off campus. When you first have Simply Analytics opened, it will ask you if you want to create an account or log in as a guest user. For now, we will log in as a guest, but you may want to create an account so that you can save your work. Otherwise, you will need to export any maps or reports before leaving Simply Analytics.
We can X out of this initial tutorial, although you may want to return and watch it later. Simply Analytics starts a new project and immediately wants us to choose a new location to work with. For now, let's enter in Vancouver. We have the option to choose Metro Vancouver or the Census Subdivision, which is the City of Vancouver. For now, let's select the Census Metro area and click Next. Simply Analytics automatically selects a few data variables to generate an initial project. We can change or remove these or accept them since we won't need to use them in our final project, but it's also okay to create a project without seed variables. But now I will have to select which type of project I'm interested in. I'm going to choose to create a map. In addition to the location that we've selected, we need to choose some data. Simply Analytics can map many types of demographic data, but what we're interested in is the PRISM data which can be found down at the bottom under Market Segments. When we reach this screen, we first want to make sure that we are working with the most current PRISM data set. So scroll down and select 2020. We could then browse the list of variables or filter it in different ways. But since we know the segment name that we're interested in, we can just type in Eat, Play, Love. We get two variable options. We have the number of households that belong to Eat, Play, and Love, or we can see what percentage of the population belongs to Eat, Play, Love within a certain geographic area. Let's start off by clicking on these three dots to the side of the variables and adding them both to our favorites. This will allow us to access them easily in the future without having to come back through this data menu. Then let's select percent Eat, Play, Love and then we can X out of this screen. And we'll click on map again to generate the map. Our initial map doesn't show much variation because it is displaying the data at a very broad level. We can see what is happening along this top menu bar. We are mapping the percent households in Eat, Play, Love in, within the Vancouver metro area. And we are breaking down the data at the level of census division, which we can see is actually that same really large area. We will want a more detailed view of the data and we can select some different options for, from within this list. Terms like census division or census subdivision may seem really unfamiliar. They are units of geography used for the Canadian census. Your librarians can help if you want more information about these categories, but if we click on something like census subdivision, we will also get a sense from the map of what type of area it represents. If we zoom in further, we can get some of the smaller options available. Census tract, or we can even break the data down at the dissemination area level, which is roughly the size of a few city blocks. This gives us quite a fine-grained, detailed view of what neighborhoods and areas have a high concentration of eat, play, love households. If the map is a useful visual that we'd like to keep, there are some options for editing the legend, the color scheme, the labels on the map, and you can export to a variety of formats using the button in upper right. We might also want to know the actual number of Eat, Play, Love households in Vancouver. To find that out, we can switch from this map view to the comparison table in the right panel. Here we can see that our percentage variable has transferred over. So let's go to the data search bar and click on the star icon to access our favorites. Here I can find that number of households in Eat, Play, Love variable and click to select. I can also right click to remove the percentage variable from the report. So here we are getting the number of households in Metro Vancouver, 71,027, compared to the number of households within Canada. We can also go over to this locations tab and add any other locations that we'd like to compare. So for instance, I might add in the city of Vancouver. And we can see that most of the households within the metro area are actually found in city of Vancouver. We can add as many other places or variables as we would like to compare. But sometimes we might not know which areas would be worth comparing. And the ranking table is a great tool for finding out top locations for a segment. So let's switch over to that view. It's also in the right hand panel. Right now the ranking tool still has that percentage variable on. So I will go back again to data 
star and select the number of households again. And for now, I'll remove percentage from the report as well. Right now, the ranking table is trying to show us the top 100 census divisions within the census metro area. But in this case, the census metro area and census division are the same, which is why we're only getting one result. 71,027 households, as we saw in the comparison report. But if we choose to see the top 100 census metro areas within Canada, we can see some really interesting information on other cities where there are significant numbers of eat, play, love. Right now it's ranking in reverse order. I'm going to right click and sort from largest to smallest. And here we can see that Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal are the top three cities with seg the Eat, Play, Love segment. We may also want to go back and add that percentage of households back into the uh, report so that we can see what percentage of the population in these cities is made up by Eat, Play, Love. Our sample magazine media concept had a very local focus but in many cases, it might be useful to know how a segment is distributed across Canada. We can export any tables using the same export button in upper right. And lastly, we can access that PRISM Marketers Handbook under the Support menu, Data Documentation, and then we need to scroll down almost to the bottom to where we can find the PRISM 5 Marketers Handbook 2020. This can be downloaded as a PDF that we can refer to as we take a look at the segments. Simply Analytics is an excellent tool for finding out more about the potential audience for a magazine media enterprise. You can also learn about other useful sources for your assignment on our Pub 375 research guide or talk to a librarian.